sit there, Greg. God bless you, Pastor. Hey, praise. Thank you, Lord. Serve to you, God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, God, for this day. God, we thank you for the service thus far. God, we thank you for our visitors. We thank you for our members. God, we just praise you today. Yes, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Yes. God, you are just so awesome in this yes. place today. Yes, yes. Give you honor. Yes. Thank Lord, you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, and as I begin to give the word to the people that you gave to me, God, let it apply to my life first. Yes. And then go out to them that we will glorify in your name. And we not only will hear what you have to say, but God will go out and do what you have built us. In Jesus' name Jesus. we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I do give honor to God today. I give honor to Elder Gray, and I give honor to all of you. I just thank God for just being in the building yeah. one more time. Yeah. Right? And the ladies will remember from yesterday, uh, the word, uh, our key word was Ohana. We had a Hawaiian theme of women's keeping, um, sisters keeping sisters, and yesterday, with our Hawaiian theme, we learned the word ohana, which means family, yeah. hallelujah. Also, we said that we should always say thank you, which is mahalo. Yes. And I thank God for the women that came out yesterday. I think we had a great time in the Yes, we did. Hallelujah. We had a great time in the Lord. And I encourage every woman. Uh, to come and join us on the second Saturday of each month for our Sisters Keeping Sisters here at Mount Sinai from 1 to 3. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the word. I do want to say good morning to those on social media that is watching us through Facebook and YouTube and uh, Instagram and the comments on Twitter, all of those things that, that uh, Elder Jose has us out there on. Uh, when you are in the area, please come and visit us here at Mount Sinai, 34th Street, Jacksonville, North Carolina. We're not going to be here always. Yeah. We're going to be moving to 1113. God is moving. Yeah. And I thank God for the movement forward. Amen. Yeah. 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 All right, if you'll go with me, grab your Bibles. We are going to Romans today. Amen. We're going to Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter today. I'm going to stay seated as I read. Uh, we do normally stand for the reading of the word, but I'm going to let you sit today. We do have a lot of reading of but I, as I said, I will not read all of the chapter. But when you get to Romans 6, let me know by saying amen. Amen. And you're still looking, say, hold on, wait a minute. Okay, we don't have any hold on, wait a minute. So everybody should be there. Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? therein. Mm. Go to the sixth verse. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. Amen. Amen. Seventh verse. For he that is dead is free from sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go to the 11th verse. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither shall ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness 
of God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Another time it says what? God forbid. Amen. Know ye not that, and this is the this is the this is the verse. If you don't get nothing out of this today, but this verse, get this verse. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom you obey. Amen. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Ooh, Pastor Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Jump down to the 20th verse. Yes. Yes. For when we were the servants of sin, we were free from righteousness. Mm -hmm. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of these things is death. Oh, okay. The 22nd verse. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness yes. and the end everlasting life. Yes. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. My thought today is, whose servant are you? Yes. Whose servant are you? I look at this <laughs> scripture and a lot of times, people try to make excuses for their actions or their inactions. The word is asking us a question. What shall we say? What shall you say? You say. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? But you know, we know that God is forgiving. We know that God is a, a savior. We know that God is a miracle worker. We know that he is our all. Amen. 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 And yet there are some things, not everybody, now, if it hits you, say, out to Louisville, and keep on going. Amen. 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 If it isn't for you, just say amen. amen. And we keep on going. Amen. But there's some folk that they know that they're not doing everything they're supposed to do. Yeah. I, I, I like Sister Florence in her testimony because she is just down to earth and honest. Amen. She said, I was in the church for years, but I was doing what I wanted to do outside of church. She knew what she was doing outside of church wasn't pleasing, but it was what she wanted to do. When, look, people say, oh, I was miserable. I was miserable. I was miserable. No, you were <laughs> When you were out there and sin, you were doing exactly what you wanted to do. You were doing it. Whatever you wanted to do, that's what you were doing. It was when the Lord began to work on you as you were convicted by the word. That's when you got uncomfortable. And then when you got uncomfortable, you, you said, okay, Lord, it's time for me to change. You can come in here every seven days a week. And you can lay out on the altar seven days a week. And you can shout until the cows come home. You can wear your dresses underneath the, your shoes. You can dress in the biggest, finest suit. You can do all of the stuff. You can look church. 
churchy. You can look churchy, but if it's not on the inside, you come in looking good, devil, you're going to walk out looking good, devil. But see, when you get, when you get serious about this thing, for the Lord, I'm going to live, for the Lord, I'm going to die. You said now it's time for me to put away stuff. Because just because grace is there, just because God will forgive me, I don't keep going and doing the same thing over and over and over. Hallelujah. God forbid. God forbid. Hallelujah. Shall we just keep on doing it? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The problem is you're not dead to sin. Amen. Because what's in you is going to come out. Look, what I say, when your can get kicked, whatever's in that can is coming out. Hallelujah. And see, a lot of times we come and say, Lord, I want you to deliver me from this and deliver me from that. But you know, uh, this right over here, I don't want you to bother that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to bother that, Lord. You know, I heard this, this thing about, well, I don't know, joke, whatever, about the man in, in the restaurant and another man came in and he laid hands on somebody and they were healed and then he laid hands on somebody else and they were healed he got them ready to lay his hand on the third man the other man said oh no wait 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. I'm on workers compensation <laughs> Around to you. 
Well, you know, I've, I've been working on this, and I know that I need to, I need to improve on this, but uh, you, you just keep on waiting. No, we want God to ask us right then. Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need healing. And it's okay for somebody to drink your food, but I need healing. The Lord don't never mess up on whose blessing goes to who. Sister Mary ain't got to worry about Sister Gus's blessing hard falling on her. Sister Beth, what the Lord say? He said, I am your portion. He said, I, everything you need is in me. Hallelujah. But we need to be free. And it says to and look, this is a short uh, message, so y'all, we about almost finished. I just want you to know today that you determine who you're going to serve. God is not going to beat us. He gave us a choice. If he gave us a choice, he means what he said. He said, you can follow me. Or not. This is what's going to happen if you don't. You read that whole that whole verse, that whole chapter, and he gets right down to the bottom, the very last one, and he says, "The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." Yeah. You can choose either one you want. Somebody said, well, people, you know, people, they, they, they get so caught up on sin that they forget about the gift that the Lord already gave them. I can give my iPad to Mother Jackson. Mother Jackson can keep that iPad or she can throw it away. It's her choice. Amen. Salvation the same way. Amen. We can either accept it or not. And look, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion, right? Yeah. He ain't going to have no confusion. He, can, he said, either with me or not, you decide. Amen. But you know what? If I had to choose, I'm going with the biggest, strongest, the one that's got the authority, yes. that can speak, and the whole world shift. Yes. Not only that, he can speak and speak things into existence. Yes. Hallelujah. There's something about opening your mouth. Amen. 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 There's yeah. something about opening your mouth. Yeah. That's why he said that you need to confess with your mouth. Yeah. Believe in your heart. Yeah. See, folks, if folk don't know who you belong to, there's something wrong with your life. Yeah. Amen. 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 And you don't have to walk around and say, I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm going on to heaven and then I, I want you to just know that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and going on to You ain't got to say all that. Yeah. It's how you live. Yeah. Because actions speak louder than words. And so if I'm telling you that God is good and I am the most evil person and, and, and I'm just dripping like I've been soaked in vinegar all night and then I'm going to tell you about the good. The Lord is good. Yeah. <laughs> well, if he's good, he need to do something with you. Put a smile on your face. Yes. Oh, oh. God is good. He looks at us and he goes. <laughs> he hears us and he goes. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying that there needs to be a difference in the old you and the new you. The Bible says the old man is crucified. 
it's, it's, it's gone. There's a new you. The new you shouldn't be doing the same old thing the old you was doing. Because if God doesn't have the power to change you, well, he does. But the thing is, you've got to want to change. I come into service and I say the same thing over and over again. But if you, you, if you only hear it, and don't do anything about it, guess what? You're going to leave the same way you came in. Amen. You just sat through two hours of your life that you couldn't stay home. <laughs> don't stay home. Don't stay home. <laughs> don't stay home. <laughs> so that, you know, one of these days, yeah. one of these days, yeah. you're going to get serious about that thing. Yeah. Take a look at yourself. Yeah. 
And, 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 and when you look at yourself, then you, you can determine, well, I knew that wasn't right, but I did this anyway. If you are born again believer, if you are sold out, then you're going to do what's right, whether somebody is looking or not. I'm not going to have the attitude, uh, 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 Rhonda, I'll use Rhonda because she said, Pastor, you always pick on me in church, so I'm going to pick on you by using your name. I love you, Rhonda. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I'm sold out, I'm not going to have the attitude with well, I'm going to do just as much as I can get away with until I get caught. Mm -hmm. To say that or to have that mentality that I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or I know I'm not walking the way I should walk or I know I'm about to cross the line but until I get called on it, I'm going to get closer and closer to the line. That is deceit. That is deceit. That is saying, I know what's right, but I don't want to do right. Yes. So, it, so that, as long as the pastor don't see me, and as long as the other church folks don't know I'm doing it, I'm all right. I'm going to do it as long as I can get away with it. Heaven, that was all. Amen. But you got that yeah. right in the church. But let me tell y'all something. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. It don't matter if I see or I don't. Because there is one that sits high yes. and he looks wow. He's the one you ought to be worried about. Yes. Because he's the one that can say, not only can I kill the body, but I can put the soul in eternal torment. Because you playing around with me. Oh, God is a merciful God. God is a wonderful God. God's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. He would not. Yes, he would. Because that same loving God, we're in a season of, of, of grace and mercy. But one day, He's going to step out of grace and mercy and he's going to step into judgment. Amen. And the Bible tells me that, you know what? He, he don't lie. Amen. He don't lie. Amen. What he said, look, he said, I said what I said. Uh, and I meant what I said. Right. It's up to you yes. to determine whether or not you're going to fall. You're doing you're doing too much. You're saying too much. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Pull yourself back. All I say is all of y'all that think I'm I'm over the edge and I'm I'm left field. Y'all look at the children of Israel. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. He said, I want to prosper. I, I want you to have good things. Yes. So he was saying that, but guess what he was saying? He was saying that when he was sending them into bondage because of their disobedience. God is a God that, you know what? You might can talk me into stuff. You might can talk me out of stuff. But when God speaks, there is no negotiation. Let me tell you something. Y'all got to quit looking at church people. Church people will hurt you. Church people 
Now, when I say church people, I'm just talking about people that come in the church. Come to church. That they in the church. Church ain't in them. Amen. But church people, those that when you are already hurting, when you are already struggling, and you are you, you at the point that you, you just need somebody just to listen. Sometimes you put your faith in people and people will hurt you. That's right. But let me tell you something. That is not God. Amen. Do not judge God on what other people do. Because God is God. And see, when you start seeing people, people will make you lose your mind. They will be good to you today and hate you tomorrow. You, you, you can walk in the room and they are just wonderful and lovely. You walk out the room, you come back in the room, and they as mean as a wet hen. And you don't know what happened with the time you left and came back out. And then you got to deal with these people. If everybody, if every single person all over the, the universe was just like you, what kind of church would you be? If everybody was just like you, now that could that could be a good thing, and that could be a bad thing. But you know what? The thing about it is, when you get in here, we say, "Lord, thank you." Lord, I appreciate the fact that you let me get in here. And I didn't come in here to see who had on what. I didn't come in here to see who was doing what and who was saying what. I came in here because I appreciate that you let me get in here one more time to raise my hand. Right. 
Christ who strengthened his men. Yeah. Uh, I am the head and I'm not the tail. Yeah. I'm above yeah. and I'm not the lead. Yeah. I'm the lender and I'm not the borrower. Yeah. You ain't talking to yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know who my God is. Yeah. I know he's a deliverer. I know that's a deliverer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know the Lord is a good God. He has been too good to me. But yeah. be the post of my mouth and yeah. say nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got to decide who you serve. Yeah. Who are you serving your yeah. yeah. Who side are you leaning yeah. on? Yeah. I'm leaning on the Lord. Yeah. Just that. You need 
this trinket and that trinket, and you don't need no no you don't need somebody else's problem. You need a brand new car, and, and you need it with all the bells and whistles. Because when you buy this car, you ain't gonna buy no other car in a long time. So you deserve it, girl. You go out and you go out there and sign your name on the dotted line, and then two months from there, you lose your job. <laughs> Now see, the Lord had already, Lord knew you were going to lose your job in a couple months. He already knew that. And he knew that if you got that $500 hoopty, it had a good engine and a good transmission and four sets of tires, you might have to roll the window down or it only cool, your air conditioner only cool when it's driving. When you stop at the stop sign, you got to be hot. But it's going to get you where you need to go. And you're not in debt. But the devil will take your prayer. He'll hear what you got to say and set you up. Amen. And as soon as he set you up, then you go, Lord, why you let that happen to me? The Lord didn't let that happen to you. He said, I told you to wait. I told you to get that car. So, Paul said this, and I'm getting ready to go. Paul said, you got to learn how to speak. Paul said, when I got a whole lot, I'm good. He said, but if I ain't got but a little bit, I'm still good. Why? He said, because I know that the Lord is my portion. Yes. Right. And what does that mean? That means that whatever I need, yes. he's going to supply it. Yes. If I need a whole says, don't grow weary in well doing. Because what? You'll reap if you faint not. Amen. What is that telling me? Think about it. Why does the Lord have to say to you, don't get upset and want to throw in the towel when you're doing good? Why does he have to tell us that? Because we're all human. And sometimes stuff gets to us. Sometimes the burden seems that, it, I, look, I take God, it's like, who, who, who's that on top of? I've taken all I can take and I can't take it no more. You know? Sometimes you get to that point. Lord, I, I, I've done everything and, and, and you're not showing up and I, I don't understand. He just said, I want to see right. if you can trust me. Yeah. Trust, me. Right. Yeah. trust me in your Jesus. circumstances. Because yes. I don't understand what you're going through. Yes. I see, I see you yes. when ain't nobody else looking. Yes. Yes. And the tears are rolling down your face because you hurt and you don't even want to talk to anybody about the hurt you're feeling. But I see. Can you trust me even when you're crying? Yes, Lord. Can you thank me when everything is falling apart? Because I told you, in everything, give thanks. The man or woman that is out on the street and has no provisions to take care of themselves. They're at the mercy of the elements, whether it's hot or cold, rain or shine. They have nothing but what they got on their back. That person may look at your situation and say, if I could just get to where they are, and that would be 
will pray for me. A shelter over my head. I can eat when I want to eat. Might not eat what I want to eat, yes. but I can eat to be full. Because yeah. see, sometimes, some folks say, well, I don't eat this, and I don't eat that. I tell you what, you get hungry enough, you're going to eat. I don't eat pork and beans and hot dogs. If you ain't got nothing but pork and beans and hot dogs, and you ain't had nothing for a couple days, the pork and beans and hot dogs are going to be real good. Amen. 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 Thank you. 